So over the past few weeks, I have planned my whole life around studying for tech interviews. This week in particular, had a focus on linked lists. And after looking through some readings, talking through lectures, as well as watching some videos on no indices this and nodes that, and in particular, finding a very strange and eerie connection between all of these lectures and lessons to like, train cars and how that is somehow like a linked list. I thought that I was ready to actually start looking at coding exercises and particular interview questions. So I'm pumped because all of this stuff actually makes sense so far. I am not completely incompetent and I'm, I'm ready. I'm pumped. Let's, let's do this. Let's actually try some stuff out. And so I'm thinking, all right, this is going to be good. There is an example that kind of shows how it works. It's node A, node B, node C. You need to make sure that you delete B and there you go. Problem solved. Done. And so for the solution, I make a counter for quote unquote indices to actually go in and find the indice that I'm looking for or index, whatever you want to call it and delete the node that I'm looking for for that particular index. And after an hour, I'm thinking, okay, I think this is going well. I'm slowly going through my progress. Mind you, this is 60 minutes. I am working through the logic of this problem. And so after about 30 minutes more, I finally decided to say, fuck it. Like, I'm just gonna look up the answer and see where they're going from there. And of course, to my surprise, not only did the solution say not to delete the node, but to solve the problem, we should actually modify, modify another node to connect to the node that is the one after the one that's supposed to be deleted. That was the solution. Mind you, that the note that we're supposed to be deleting is not actually deleted. So I proceed to spin out. I went from feeling wholly confident that I could solve this interview question to thinking what kind of idiot would actually go so far as to study for a glorified standardized test on the off chance that you could get into Google. And then I realized that I was that idiot that was actually going hard on studying for a glorified standardized test on the off chance that I would go to Google. And then I started questioning my career choices and also considered for a slight moment to move to Canada, just fuck it, I'm not doing software engineering anymore, and just live on a remote farm and then change my YouTube channel to my lifestyle on a farm with 12 of my cows. For any of you that are feeling the same way, feeling discouraged, feeling overwhelmed, mildly depressed, and possibly sitting down and watching this while having a drink in two in the afternoon, just because. Note that um, I am also drinking at two in the afternoon because I'm full unemployed and I'm living my best life and because, cheers, why not? I am so Oh, so sorry that you're feeling this way. We knew in the beginning that this was going to be a hard journey, even though some of you have gotten computer science degrees, you might be still looking for a job. Maybe some of you are graduates from boot camps. You're still trying to figure out what projects you should be doing. And even harder for those of you that are self-taught developers that have no clue which way to go next. I am so sorry. This is a lot. I'm like sweating just thinking about it, how hard this, sh just all of this is for anybody that is looking at this video right now. Just, it's a lot. We have a responsibility to ourselves to try and get through this as much as possible because you never know through all of those no's, there could be that one yes, that one opportunity to get you to a place where you're able to solve real problems, you're able to do it in such a way where you can say, oh my gosh, that is my code. I worked on that feature. This is so cool. Like millions of people actually see this every day. I hope that you are able to keep the momentum, especially when things get hard. I hope that you remember to power through any difficulties that you guys are going through because it is a lot. This is a hard process and it continues to be an even harder process of all of the things that you feel or that society tells you that you need to know to get into tech. It may take a little time, but it is going to happen. An employer is going to say yes to you. 
You're going to find that client. You're going to get that money. You're going to get that nice big fat check. You're going to be able to pay off your debt. Make sure that you get those loans in place. Make sure that you're able to live a better and comfortable life and work on some really cool stuff that you want to work on because you put in the hard work to do so. But until then, it may take a little time and I have a couple of things that I hope that you will consider doing as you progress through your interviews. One of them is just doing the hard work, actually showing up for yourself every day consistently and keeping a growth mindset, actually doing the work to practice, even when you don't feel like it and that friends marathon is on and you really love friends, this is a reminder not to blow off your responsibilities just because you don't feel like it. There are always going to be times where you just can't. And it's better if you do show up just in case that next opportunity is actually going to give you the chance that you need and also knowing when to rest because overworking yourself to burnout is not gonna be a good way to show up for you and show up for any employer that decides to give you that opportunity. So knowing and making sure that you have the difference very clear in your head between actually making sure that you work hard, show up for yourself every day, as well as learning to rest. Two, persistence. Persistence to push through all of these times when employers have said no, they aren't calling you back, they didn't think that you were good in your technical interview the first time, so they sure as hell don't wanna see you a second time. That, that That's definitely happened to me, it does. <laughs> it really sucks. Again, there are gonna be a million employers and opportunities that are going to say no to you, but as long as you keep showing up, as long as you keep persistent, as long as you keep going in that opportunity and growth mindset, there's always going to be that one place, that one opportunity that is going to be a yes, that's going to open you up to all of these new and great things, experiences, places, people, all that fun stuff. So keep going for it, keep working for it. Now, I won't say that you should just bottle up your negative feelings right now because that leads to coping mechanisms that are ridiculous and unhealthy and just happen to show up when they don't need to, especially during an interview where you feel like you're failing and then you just start ugly crying. I've definitely done that before. That is not cute, baby, that is not cute. Feel your feelings of despair, of depression, of sadness, but don't let them be a big drama or just like all consuming as a part of your life. Being in that sad place for too long, it's just, it's never good for you and it's never healthy. So don't do that. Acknowledge your feelings and then move on. Three, I want you to experiment with your ways of learning, your ways of growing and any opportunities that you might find. If they feel good to you, if they feel aligned, say yes to them. Nowadays, I am gonna be that person that says Twitter is gonna be a great place for you to start. See what you can learn from there. 100 Days of Code is a great hashtag to work with. You can collaborate with different managers and recruiters that are actually actively looking for people like you that are sharing their knowledge with the world just because other people have shared their great knowledge and actually had gotten results with you. You just, there's so many cool people and places and information and experiences for you guys to try out while you're on Twitter. And it's not like it hasn't happened before. People have gotten jobs just because they were an active member on Twitter. You never know. Or there's also contributing to open source projects. I think that it's kind of cool that there is a way to where you can actively just go on and make some changes to an open source project. And when they get approved, you're actually like seeing whatever that feature is on that website or on that software. And it's like, oh my gosh, like I've actually worked on that. That's so freaking cool. I am not saying to spend all of your off hours on a free project where you're not really getting any compensation for it, but it is a great opportunity to help yourself prioritize and potentially work with other people that you've never met before. Collaborate with some experienced developers that could help you potentially get a job. So that's my gift to you today. And if you are feeling gross about your progress, I would love to know more about it. I would hope that you would be comfortable enough with sharing your experiences in the comments. I know exactly what you're going through. I've been through that before. I'm currently going through it now. And keep being in a growth mindset. It, it really is about just making sure that you're able to say yes to opportunities that feel good and aligned for you. And eventually people will say yes. 
after all of the no's and missed opportunities and gross feeling things, somebody's going to say yes to you. It's going to happen for you. Keep pushing, keep being resilient, keep being awesome. And let me know if this message resonated with you at all. I appreciate you guys. I'll see you next week.